you want to have the hand resting on the leg in a neutral position with the palm up. And then you want to place the transducer in a transverse plane on the body. And you want to label the image biceps tendon, short, proximal to distal. And as you sweep down from proximal to distal, you want to tilt up to eliminate anisotropy. Now you're going to rotate the transducer 90 degrees to image the biceps tendon and the long axis from proximal to distal. As you scan distal, you want to heel the probe down so that the tendon is straight across the screen. And you want to scan until the myotendon is junction. So then to do dynamic evaluation of the biceps tendon, you want to externally rotate the arm. Go back from neutral to external rotation to check for subluxation or dislocation immediately outside of the bicycle groove. Now you want to have the arm in external rotation with the elbow tucked in. You're going to place the transducer in a transverse plane over the body to image the subscapularis tendon in the long axis from superior to inferior. So you're going to sweep inferiorly while you're toggling the probe up to eliminate anisotropy. So now you're going to rotate the transducer 90 degrees. You're going to be sagittal on the patient's body to image the subscapularis tendon in the short axis from distal to proximal, from the insertion onto the lesser tuberosity to the myotendinous junction. And as I'm scanning medially on the body, I'm going to be tilting the probe laterally to eliminate anisotropy. So now you're going to place the transducer on the top of the shoulder parallel to the clavicle and the acromion to image the AC joint in the long axis. You just need one picture of this with grayscale and one picture of it with power Doppler. So you're going to use the AC joint as a landmark to find the coracochromial ligament. So you're going to keep the lateral part of your probe fixed on the acromion and you're gonna rotate the medial part of your probe downward, in this case clockwise, until another bone comes into view. That's the coracoid process of the scapula. And the coracoacromial ligament runs between the acromion and the coracoid parts of the scapula. So you wanna palpate the scapular spine on the patient's body and come to the lateral edge of it. Place your transducer long axis to the scapular spine at the lateral edge and move slightly inferior to locate the glenohumeral joint. And you just need a picture of the glenohumeral joint in the long axis, grayscale and with power Doppler. Next, you can use the glenohumeral joint as your landmark for the infraspinatus tendon. So if you slide just slightly up and elongate the infraspinatus tendon in the long axis, you can then slide your probe at this exact angle anteriorly until you're at the footprint of the infraspinatus tendon. At this point, you're gonna scan it in the long axis from anterior to posterior. So you're first sliding back a little bit, down a little bit, and then back and elongating it over the GH joint as you go until the myotendon. Now you're gonna rotate the transducer 90 degrees at the tendon insertion onto the greater tuberosity. And you're, now you're gonna scan in the short axis from distal to proximal from the insertion to the myotendon junction. Again, you're gonna use the scapular spine as a landmark this time to image the rotator cuff muscles. So just below the scapular spine is the infraspinatus muscle, and then below that's the teres minor. And then if you go over the scapular spine, you have the supraspinatus muscle. The tendon, the muscle fibers run this way. So when you place the transducer sagittal on the patient's body, you're actually short axis to the muscles. And it's easier to differentiate the infraspinatus muscle from the teres minor in the short axis. So first you image the infraspinatus muscle in the short axis here, 
And then you can slide down to image the teres minor. And then you can slide over the scapular spine and a little bit medial to image the supraspinatus muscle on the short axis. You want to have the patient place their hand in a modica modified cross position where their hand is palm down on their butt, or you can tell the patient their palm down in their back pocket. And you can have her sit, that was just for demonstration purposes. For the supraspinatus tendon, you're going to use the deltopectineal groove as your landmark. So it's this crease in the shoulder right here. This isn't where you see the supraspinatus tendon, but this is where you place the transducer to make sure you're at the proper angle. So you wanna place the transducer notch up at the deltopectineal groove, and then you wanna sweep posteriorly past the long head of the biceps tendon to image the supraspinatus tendon in the long axis from anterior to posterior. And you can see that you stay at this angle the whole time while you're scanning the tendon. So you're gonna label this supraspinatus long anterior to posterior. Now you're gonna rotate the transducer 90 degrees to image the supraspinatus tendon in the short axis from distal to proximal. You'll see the long head of the biceps tendon on the anterior side of the screen. And you're gonna stay in this exact angle as you scan towards the head. But you're gonna label the picture supraspinatus tendon short distal to proximal. And you're gonna tilt down as you sweep up to eliminate anisotropy. So for dynamic evaluation of the supraspinatus, you wanna use the AC joint again as your landmark, and then you wanna slide laterally to the acromion until the supraspinatus comes into view. And then you wanna have the patient abduct their arm. I usually tell the patient like they're flapping a wing, and they are doing this to make sure that the supraspinatus tendon slides under the acromion with abduction.